The Lodge Card Club, Boston, Texas, home of today's Insanity game. We had a good session the other day here. We had a good session of 5100. We have this one where hopefully things go as well as they did last time. In the previous one, we won about $15,000. Sure to be some insanity. It should be a very fun game today. We've got Neat Silver in the game. Been a fan of him for years. We have Mariano on my direct left. Very famous poker blogger, perhaps the best poker player amongst all the poker bloggers. Not a great seat, not great to have him on my direct left. What can you do? We just have to get in there. Going into the arena, we're going back to battle. Wish me luck, pray for me, let's go. Let's find some run good. Let's do our best, let's go. Game started. Yeah, like Andrew's taking pictures like it's part of the FBI's most wanted list. He's able to recognize all his chips. Lock in, boys and girls. It's not even hand number one yet, and DQ is already giving me shit for vlogging. We got another insane game today. 5100 with a 100 big blind ante. Straddles are going to be on. There will be gambling. There will be blood. Let's get into it. This is hand number 15 off the deck. I had just returned to the studio here, just in time to look down at a pretty 7-5 suited. Raise it up here. $300 to go. My good buddy, Mariano. He's on my direct left, which means I have the worst seat in the house. Punishment right off the bat, three bets me up to $1,000 in the hijack. Didn't come all the way to Austin, Texas to fold 7-5 suited. I make the call. Queen 6-5, two diamonds, one club. Gives us some medium connection here. Pair right away and two back doors. Check it over to Mariano who checks it back. We get a free card and that free card gives us trips. We have an easy lead here, $800 it is. Mariano, he's the best poker player who makes vlogs in the world. Too good to put money in, he lets it go. Thanks, bro. Very next hand, we find suited ace four in the plus one spot. Make it $300 to go once again. And once again, what a nice guy, Mariano. Three betting me immediately up to $1,000. Granted, he has had the best hand each time so far. DQ cold calls out of the small blind. We could put in the four bet here. I like that play a lot. We should be doing that with the occasional ace five suited and ace four suited. I think it would make a lot of sense to do it here too, especially with DQ cold calling. He's not gonna be that strong and Mariano doesn't need too much of a hand to put in a three bet. So I really like a four bet here, but in the moment I decide on the flat call, take it to the streets and don't see any improvement on the king queen nine. Check it over to Mariano. He continues with a C bet. DQ folds, I'm gonna fold. No shame in folding the worst hand here. In this hand, Nate Silver, the Nate Silver, raises it up out of the cutoff over a $200 straddle, makes it $600 to go. We're on the dealer button, look it down at pocket sixes. I make the call. Action over to Pierre in the big blind. Very tough player. Puts in the three bet up to $3,200. We're not incredibly deep here, not getting amazing implied odds. We happen to flop a set. Nobody likes in it though. I'm in there. Let's see if we can find another six on this flop one time. Unfortunately, it's not the flop of dreams. Ace, Jack, Jack. This is all over Pierre's three betting range. As we can see, he doesn't love that flop, but makes a good bet. Having clear range advantage, not a good board for us. We are out of there. Nate Silver in the plus one spot raises it up to $300. I'm on his direct left here with pocket eights. I make an easy call. Over to Alex in the small blinds, another good player. Mostly plays a lot of PLO, but does get into the no limit streets. Mixes it up here. He calls as well, and DQ doesn't like to miss too many flops. He makes the call out of the big blind. Four ways to a flop, a jack, nine, five, with two hearts. Nate continues with a C bet. Four ways on this flop. As we can see, we actually had the best hand here, but tough to know that in the moment. When the initial raiser fires into three callers, four ways, pocket eights, third pair doesn't really feel that strong decide to let this one go and as we can see we run into what is probably the bottom of nate's continuing range which is an open-ended straight draw with two overs and a backdoor flush draw so it's not like he had complete air not like we were way ahead or anything good bet by nate <laughs> queen jack off suit here probably a little bit on the loose side in early position but not completely unreasonable. $300 to go, and we get two calls from Mike X and DQ. DQ checks out of the small blind. Mike X fires out a little pro bet, see where he's at. This one is a whiff for us. Trying to find some hands here. No traction yet in the early going of this poker game. All right, in this hand, we've got the ace-10 offsuit in the plus one. Again, probably towards the bottom of our opening range, but not egregious. Alex defends his button. DQ in there with a suited connector. Mike defends the big blind. Four ways to a flop this time. It is very wet, very connected, but it does give us top pair, top kicker. So when there's two checks in front of me, again, it's kind of one of those uncomfortable spots that demands a C bet. That's my feeling anyway in the moment. I bet $600, just around half pot. When I see a flat call from Alex on the button and the other two players get out of the way, 
feel a little bit more comfortable now. I feel like the strongest hands, or at least hands that are stronger than mine, would find a raise on this board pretty frequently. So when the turn comes, a very nice looking brick, a three of diamonds. I'm definitely encouraged to keep firing here, this time for $1,800. Alex got something that he's gonna need to see a river card with. He makes the call, and we're off to a river card, which is the seven of spades, which if I had to pick, a card out of the deck that would be the worst card for me it would either be the seven of spades or eight of spades no spades in my hand can't turn this one into a bluff i don't think i check it over to alex who is going to assemble a wager the only bluff that i'm finding would be queen jack something of that nature maybe queen jack of clubs I have trouble seeing that hand continuing on the turn with a spade draw out there. Very disappointing river card. Just going to have to let this one go. And if we get bluffed, so be it. But as we can see, we did not put mine in with the best hand, fold with the worst hand. That's going to be winning poker in the long run. In the short run, it's losing poker. Still no traction to be found for us just yet in this 5100 game. Okay. All right, in this hand, we are playing the knit game, which is the new version of the stand-up game. When you win a hand, you return your knit button, and if you're the last person to be holding your knit button, if you haven't won a hand yet, then you gotta pay a bounty to everybody. I believe it's $300 a person, two or $300 a person in this instance to everybody. So you gotta play some hands, and it incentivizes people to widen their ranges, try and find a victory as soon as possible. So in this hand, when Alex opens from under the gun, plus one, DQ calls, and I look down at ace five off suit. Normally, I would just let this one go, but I'm definitely incentivized to play my button. I've got an ace. I've got some wheel ability with this hand. I need to get in the mix. I'm calling. Boots calls as well. We go four ways to four, deuce, deuce. Boots checks it, and Alex puts out a continuation bet of $1,200. DQ, he's got nothing. He gets out of the way. I feel like Alex would put a C bet in with the vast majority of his range here. There's some chance we actually have the best hand with ace high. We do have a gut shot. We've got a couple overs to the board, of course. I call it Boots gets out of the way. Turn is the six of clubs. Should be a reasonably good card for me. We've got a five in our hand, which means we should be able to credibly rep three five suited. Again, this is the Nick game, so I'm going to be playing a wide range on the button over calling looking for favorable flops to try and win a hand and return my knit button alex checks it over to me i am going to start turning this one into a bluff right away i fire out for two thousand six hundred dollars repping pocket fours repping ace deuce repping three five repping pocket sixes maybe a hand like pocket sevens alex isn't buying it though he thinks there's enough possible bluffs in my range and he makes the call turn is a brick offsuit seven checks it over to me once again and i of course feel like we're going to have to bluff if we want to try and win this hand. Definitely feel like ace five high is not the best hand at the moment. So if we're going to do this, I think we're going to have to continue to tell the story. We either flopped well or we turned well. Still have all those hands in my range, I feel like. Three five suited feels like a very reasonable hand. A couple full houses out there. So I think I want to go somewhat polar. We need to go large here and try and get some fold equity out of this hand, out of this situation. I bet $7,300 and start thinking fold thoughts, hoping that Alex can put together the story that I am trying to tell, trying to paint a picture, trying to tell a story and hope that his mind sees that picture. And he starts trying to piece it together out loud, looking at me, looking at the board, looking at chips, looking at me. One of the most uncomfortable situations in poker when you put out thousands of dollars with an airball bluff, just hoping that the guy will find the fold. It's never a good sign when the guy starts assembling all those chips those multicolored chips does all the work of putting all those chips together, counts out the call. Never, ever a good sign. And in fact, Alex does make the call with ace jack high. Somehow makes an awesome call here. Just absolutely wrecks us in this spot. Ace high versus ace high in a four-way pot. Manages to make the call down, does Alex. Ends up being a $24,000 pot. It's gotta be one of my biggest bluffs, if not my biggest bluff ever, that $7,400 torch off. Feel like I like my line. Obviously preflop is especially loose, but as mentioned, considering this is the knit game in progress, trying to get in there, trying to find some hands as soon as possible, trying to find a victory as soon as possible. Don't get one here. Instead, get wrecked and we are firmly in Stuckville now. You owe 6,000 to Angie. Moving right along, the game, the show, it all continues. DQ's got the $400 straddle on in this hand. We're in the cutoff with eight, six of spades. 
I'm in there looking to get into the mix. I make it a thousand dollars to go and DQ puts in the flat call here, which may look a little funny on screen, but the thing is he hasn't even looked at his cards yet. King nine three with two spades, not a bad one for us. Bought ourselves a flush draw, so when he checks it over to me, I bet $800. DQ finally looks at his hand alongside Mike X, finds an above average hand it seems. He puts in the raise up to $200. Of course, we're going nowhere with a flush draw. I make the call. Turn is an offsuit three. Now DQ slows down with a check. I'm not loving a board pair. Decent chance he could have found anything from pocket kings to king three to nine three pocket nines, any of that stuff. Blind hand, board pair, not good when you're on a flush draw. So I check it back and take a free card. River is a useless offsuit 10. DQ fires out $6,000. We've got ourselves eight high. Easy fold for us. And DQ shows us the pre-flop nuts pocket aces life is good when you're dq basically nothing going well for us in this game so far making second best hands running into some tough spots and can't beat a guy who's playing blind pre-flop yeah, no like next hand no straddle on just 5100 we find the ace 10 offsuit once again i make it 300 to go alex calls out of the small blind dq pretty sure he hasn't looked at his cards once again he makes the call out of the big blind hey look at that we flop top pair ace seven six two clubs these guys check it over to me. I'm wagering $500 it is. Alex quickly folds. DQ, I think he still has not looked at his cards, which makes a lot of sense looking at what he has here. He calls blind and we're off to a turn card, heads up. Offsuit seven, I know he hasn't looked at his cards yet. So when he checks over to me, I'm still betting here. It would be a shame to miss any value on any street versus a blind hand when we've got top pair. So I fire out again, small four figure amount. This time DQ decides to look at his cards. He's got the nine three offsuit. Thanks for the gift on the flop DQ. I'll take it wherever I can get it. In this hand, the $200 straddle is on, and Boots comes in for a $500 raise out of the plus two position. Graphics are a little slow to catch up in this hand, but we have got ourselves the pocket jacks out of the small blinds, and to me, that feels like a three bettable hand. I make it $2,000 to go. Action folds back over to Boots, who asks for a count. Takes a look at my stack. Decides to continue with a flat call. Flop comes 997, no flush draws. Looks like a pretty good flop for me. And these pocket jacks, I'm going to wager $1,500. Boots is going nowhere. He makes the call. Turn is another seven. Not entirely sure where I'm at at this point. Boots could potentially have a hand like 6-7 suited, 8-7 suited. Something like that where he calls the flop. I slow it down with a check. Boots assembles a bet, $2,400. Don't think we can do too much other than call with our pocket jacks here. Rivers and Osu King feels like a pretty neutral card. Not sure either of us should have too many kings in our range at this point as played. I check it and Boots, as we can see, doesn't love that card either. He checks back and we roll it over and get shown the bad news. Big pair versus big pair. Trying to count the number of good things that have happened so far for us in this game. And it can be easily counted on one hand where we might need a couple more hands to count the bad things that have happened so far. Definitely finding some run bad. Lots of not great spots thus far. In this next hand, a $200 straddle is back on. Boots comes in for the $600 raise in the plus two spot. DQ makes the call out of the cutoff. And we look down at King-9 suited in the big blind. I feel like if I'm on my A game, I will probably find a three bet with this holding out of position, squeeze DQ who's in the middle and try and find some folds. This hand has some playability post flop and it blocks some of the strong hands that will continue pre flop. Understandable that I might not be on my A game at this point, finding lots and lots of losses so far. I defend the big blind with the king nine suited and we go three ways to a flop. King seven, four, rainbow, flop ourselves top pair, check to the initial raiser. He checks and DQ checks as well. Turns the four of hearts, could check it, could bet it. We've got one of the weakest kings in our range, so maybe it's okay to have some top pairs in our checking range. I check and action checks through once again. Rivers and offsuit eight, definitely going for some value now. I bet $1,000, but nobody has anything. And we find ourselves a little victory here. Surrounded around the stars of poker, the Doyle Brunson. All right, no straddle on in this hand, but DQ does call dark. Action over to us on the button, looking down at two jacks. Once again, obviously raising here, $700 to go. Back to DQ, who I think does look at his hand here. Just puts in the flat call, and we are off to a flop. Heads up. Flop comes 644. Our jacks are once again an over pair. DQ checks, of course, I'm wagering. I bet 800 and DQ calls. Turn is a seven. All these cards on the board could be very firmly within DQ's range. I don't really care. It's DQ A and B. We've got jacks that are still an over pair. I'm wagering. I bet $1,700. And I was wrong. DQ has not looked at his cards yet. He takes this opportunity to finally look at his cards, finds that he's got ace king. 
finds that those cards are very pretty and doesn't want to let them go just yet, and he tosses in the $1,700. River puts a third four up on the board. DQ checks it over to us. We've got ourselves a very reasonable full house here. Can get value from some smaller full houses, and if he somehow is a straight, can get value from that too, potentially. After he checks, I bet $2,500. DQ can beat some bluffs. Maybe if I'm somehow value betting the ace queen high. I mean, it is DQ. It is possible. He decides he wants to see what's happening. He tosses in the 2,500 bucks, and we finally find a victory, a decent sized victory, thanks to the pocket jacks. If DQ did manage to look at his cards pre flop, we could have played an even bigger one. So maybe all this blind play, maybe there's something to it. Maybe it actually worked out in his favor in this instance. Days four suited. It's the birthday hand, January 4th, plus one position. $200 travel is on to make it $500 to go. Boots calls out of the cutoff. DQ finds a reason to fold for once, and Mike X defends the big blind. 10-9-7 multi-ways. There is one club on the board, but versus two opponents, feels like there's going to be a bunch of connectivity with their ranges. I check it, and Boots checks it back. Turns the queen of clubs, second club. Mike checks again. Could find a semi-bluff here, but again, with two opponents in the hand, feels like we might have a tough time getting it through. I check it, and Boots takes this opportunity following two checks on two streets to put out a wager. I don't want to give it up. I've got the nut flush draw here. I don't really feel like I have the best hand all that often, but I suppose it's possible. But of course, we've got ourselves the nut draw. So I make the call. We're off to a river card, which is a very welcome looking site. The jack of clubs. We end up with the ace high flush here. And now, of course, if I could see Boots hand, I would never bet. We'll check it over to him, but I don't know what he's got. All I know is I have the ace high flush and I'm trying to put some money into the pot. I make a bet, but as we can see, Boots has absolutely nothing that he can call with. $200 straddle back on in this hand. Boots comes in for the raise to $500. DQ, of course, makes the call. Nothing out of the ordinary. Mike X calls out of the small blind, and we've got the ace queen suited in the straddle spot. This will not be a squeeze that I will miss. Very pretty looking cards here. I three bet up to $3,200. Casual, $3,200 raise. Boots thinks it over for a little while, but eventually decides to get out of the way. DQ takes this opportunity to look at his cards for the first time. Finds a 6-3 offsuit. That one hits the muck. Mike wants to get involved. He likes to play a lot of hands. He's a poker fan. And not only that, but it's his birthday. Happy birthday to Mike X. Perhaps he's got the birthday run good on his side, but he makes what is a good fold here with the King Jack off suit. The King Jack off. You're getting a lot of love. In this hand, DQ probably calls blind here. Mike X finds a raise up to $500 out of the hijack. And I had done some thinking in between some of the early hands where I had pocket pairs. I had pocket sixes early on. I had pocket eights shortly after that. I'd done some thinking where some of these guys on my right probably playing a little bit more loose. So I feel like the strategy that I should be employing with some of these middling pocket pairs is finding three bets a little bit more often than I might normally. So that's why I decide to three bet this pocket seven holding up to $1,500 on the button. And we can throw all that out of the window because Mariano wastes no time in immediately four betting up to $4,000 out of the small blind. TQ looks at his cards. He is out of there. Mike X is in a really tough spot now facing a three bet and a four bet. None of the options feel great. Cold calling feels awful. He still has me behind him to worry about. Ripping it in seems a little bit adventurous. Folding pocket tens, that's not fun whatsoever, but definitely cannot blame him for finding the fold with pocket tens with a three bet and a four bet behind him. Back over to me now, and again, not a ton of implied odds here. I've only got 21.8 behind, but it's only 2,500 to call, and we get to see three cards, and maybe we can flop a set, but... Of course, that is optimistic thinking. 940 use rainbow, probably about a 5 out of 10 on the favorability scale of flops here. Mariano puts out a wager of $2,300. Small wager, which he might do with his full range. Understandable. Can't fold the pocket sevens just yet. Turn comes a six. Mariano weighs his options and assembles another bet. This time to the tune of $4,200. Just another one of those super uncomfortable spots. It's going to happen when you're playing against super good players. At this point, I feel like there's a decent chance that we have the best hand, but what can we do about it? Are we just going to call off and call all the way down, putting in our entire stack on the river, which is almost certainly going to happen with a measly pair of pocket sevens? Definitely don't enjoy it. I feel like a couple of these options are not very good ones. I feel like he's going to make me look like a fool sometimes. He's going to have an ace-king type holding a lot of the time here, but he's also going to have aces. So what's it going to be? Are we going to call down with pocket sevens versus aces? Are we going to fold versus an ace-king? That's the tough part when you're playing against very good players. All the credit to Mariano. Puts in this turn bet here, sizing for the river jam that I know is coming. I decide, can't take the heat, decide to let the sevens go, and Mariano, once again, gets the best of it. 
things going not good at all in this session so far. As you can see, according to these stats, as Slick Rick likes to say, we are very much throwing the party here in this game. Down $23,000 down at the bottom. Things are not going well at all. Can't give up here. The show goes on. We must continue battling. On to the next hand. And in this one, DQ limps in for $200 following a straddle. I don't think he's looked at his cards yet at this point. We find ace nine off suit. We are in the big blind here. Rates to be ahead of all other hands, especially with some dead money in there. Player not looking at his cards. I'm going to raise it up here. I make it $1,000 even to go out of the big blind. Mariano on my left, he makes the call, gets back over to DQ. Now he's going to take a look at his cards. Seems fair. Finds himself something he definitely wants to see three cards with at least, and he tosses in the $1,000 as well. So three ways to a flop. That comes down King-7, Deuce, Rainbow. Should be a fairly reasonable flop for the pre-flop aggressor. That would be me. It's not super comfortable, of course, out of position versus two players, but I'm still going to try here. Going to go ahead and put out a wager of $1,000 once again. Thankfully, Mariano gets out of the way pretty quickly. DQ thinks about it briefly, shows me his cards, and decides to send those cards into the muck, which is very good news because he has me crushed here. It's not a big pot, but of course, we'll take it wherever we can get it, especially when we don't have the best hand. On to the next hand here, suited connector in the hijack, 8-9 of diamonds, I'm in there. $500 to go over a $200 straddle. Folds around to DQ in the straddle, flicks it in. Going heads up against my buddy here. King Jack 8, two spades. DQ leads right into me, $600. Got ourselves bottom pair here. Of course, we're not folding. I think raising is a little bit too aggro. Call it is. Queen of clubs, second club on the turn. DQ slows down now with a check. Still just bottom pair here, not a ton of equity. Just gonna check this one back. River, very nice looking eight of spades, gives us trips. DQ checks it over to me. I'm wagering here. We're losing to straights, we're losing to flushes, but it's trips. There's no way we're not value betting with trips. Expect DQ to wager with those aforementioned hands. So of course, I'm wagering. Put out a bet, TQ thinks for a little bit, doesn't exactly have a super strong hand, and he decides to let this one go. Two hands in a row, maybe the tide has turned, no jinx, fingers crossed. Back in the hijack again, this time with Jack Nine of Hearts. I'm gonna raise it up to my usual $500 over the straddle. And what do you know, DQ calls into the straddle. Once again, heads up versus my buddy DQ. And he checks it dark and I decide, you know what, here's a, here's a wager in the dark, $300. Comes down King 7-5, not a great flop for us. That $300 doesn't feel all that effective at the moment because DQ is going nowhere. Still in the dark, he makes the call. Turn is a jack, that's a good card for us. We make second pair on the board. DQ checks it over to me in the dark. You know what, I'm gonna check this one back, just like I normally would if everything was normal poker, not insanity poker that is happening here in this situation. River seven of diamonds, DQ checks again, still hasn't looked at his cards, I confirm, I make sure. I ask him if he's looked at his cards yet and he says no. How can you not go for a value bet here with a pair of jacks on this board versus a guy who has gone all this way still without looking at his cards. I put out $500 trying to get value from I don't know what. Maybe he'll call in the dark, maybe he won't, maybe he'll take a look at his cards. He does call in the dark. He goes all the way to the river, calls in the dark, and, <laughs> and has the best hand. How is this possible? How do you beat a guy who is not even looking at his cards, making top pair versus second pair? The magic, the magic of DQ, everyone. On to the next one, still battling, still fighting, trying to find some good spots. And in this one, we just might have finally found a good spot. DQ's got the straddle on here. The graphic's slightly wrong. He's in for the $200 straddle. Action over to me, looking down at the best hand ever created. Pocket aces. Let's try and find something good to happen here. I make it $500 to go over DQ's straddle. Alex, he makes the call for the $500, and it's over to DQ, who apparently very much likes his holding because he is re-raising up to $2,200. What a welcome sight when you have pocket aces. Action, back over to me. Of course, we are putting in another raise because if DQ's in there re-raising, chances are he likes his holding. A little bit different from when he's playing blind. This time, he is looking and he is re-raising. I'm putting more money in there, not going to screw around, trying to get as much money as possible with these pocket aces, especially with Alex in there behind. Time for another re-raise. I'm going to put in five yellow chips and four black chips, $5,400 to go. Alex gets out of the way and back over to DQ, who's going to have to play out of position versus me. Does he want to do that with a flat? Or does he want to try and pile even more money in? We are hoping for the latter. And we get 
the good news. He goes ahead, ships it all in there. We waste no time in showing him that we've got the goods, show him before we even call. Of course, we're tossing these chips in there, make the call, and we've got ourselves a $35,800 pot with pocket aces versus ace king. It's as good of a situation as you can possibly ask for, 88% versus 12%. We're going to have to see the cards in the middle, of course, and the flop comes down pretty favorable for these aces. No clubs on board, no pair of kings, and on the turn, those possibilities, that potential is dead. DQ is drawing dead on the turn. We are going to scoop a much needed $36,000 pot here. What a dream when you are card dead, spot dead, running bad in a 5,100, often 200 game down $23,000 to find the pocket aces versus DQ's ace king. Unlucky for DQ because he was putting on quite the show here, playing blind and just basically crushing me to find a hand as nice as ace-king suited and run it right into the pocket aces. Pretty unlucky for him, but of course, we will take it. $18,000 profit in this hand. As mentioned, very much needed the way things were going in this session. All right, moving along here. Spirits are definitely higher than they were just a little bit ago. In this hand, action folds around to me. And there are multiple straddles on in this hand, all the way up to $800 from boots in the three seat. We looked at it, queen nine suited in the big blind. Certainly playable, of course, one of those spots, not super comfortable, out of position. Gonna have to put in a significant raise here with the queen nine suited, but I'm gonna go for it. I make it $2,200 to go. Maybe could have gone a little bit bigger since we have to play the entire hand out of position but I don't think we need to go too, too big. Mariano gets out of the way, Pierre gets out of the way, and Boots decides to defend his $800 straddle, getting a pretty good price here. So we go heads up to a flop of eight, five, deuce, rainbow. Gives us two over cards, gives us a backdoor straight draw and a backdoor flush draw. So not the worst flop, all things considered. Definitely not going to just check folds here. Check calling the queen high doesn't seem great. So I put out a C bet of $2,800. Boots thinks about it for a bit, decides not ready to give it up just yet, unfortunately for us, and he tosses in the call. Pot is building. We've suddenly got ourselves a $10,000 pot here, and we've got ourselves queen high. Not great. Not a great spot. Turn comes a seven of clubs, offsuit seven. Complete rainbow on the board now. Kind of an interesting spot here. Could go one of two ways. We could check and give up. If Boots called on that flop, maybe he's connected here in this range and on this turn card as well. But we've got ourselves a nine, which means we block the strongest hands. We've got removal to straights. We've got ourselves a gut shot as well. And we still got ourselves two over cards, two potential flopped pairs. So do we want to give it up? No, I don't think so. I think we want to try and go for it. I bet $4,200 and that sends Boots into the tank. Starts shuffling the chips and starts giving us the stare down. Goes well into the tank here. And of course, I am thinking fold boots, fold thoughts. Definitely start getting exceptionally nervous when he starts counting out chips that he looks like he wants to raise with. But after a little bit of time, he restacks those chips back into his stack. And I'm not going to say it's a little bit more comfortable now because I'm out there with queen high and $4,200 wager plus previous wagers. Really hoping that we can get this one through, find a victory with this queen high, and after some significant amount of time, that is what happens. Find a victory here with the queen nine of hearts, which certainly was not the best hand. Turns out Boots, he had the right read, he had the right feeling, but he only had himself bottom pair. And it's just so tough to continue with bottom pair. Maybe it's good now, maybe it's not. And if it is good now, maybe it won't be by the river. Give him a lot of credit for thinking about making the call down there or maybe even doing some other things. But of course, very happy to get this one through with the queen nine high. Update on the winnings board and we are finally back into the black. $915 worth of profit, which of course in a game of this size is basically as close as to even as you can get. But after being down 23K, feels super good. Moving right along here in the cutoff, we find Ace Jack off suit, $500 to go over a $200 straddle. Alex defends that straddle and we go heads up to a flop. 10, nine, seven, Alex checks. We could see bet or we could check here. I don't think we're gonna fold out too many worse hands here with the Ace Jack. I think a lot of times I wanna think about what types of hands are a pit below mine. 
That would be a hand like ace 10 preflop. Of course, that's top pair here. Doesn't really seem like there's gonna be too many hands that are better than mine that are gonna be able to find a fold. So I decided to check it back. Turns to ace of spades, second spade. Alex checks it over to me once again. All right, time to wager. I got myself top pair here. Got myself a gutter still. Of course, not gonna love it if he finds a check raise, but we'll deal with that when we come to it. And we do not come to that. Alex releases his hand. Pocket fours can't really continue with four overcards to that pair. Drag this one in. Things very much trending more so in the right direction for us at this point. I'm gonna try and keep it going here. Raise it up with queen eight suited in early-ish position. Make it $500 to go. And we see DQ, Nate Silver, and Boots. We see three callers. So we've got ourselves a multi-way flop here. Don't really find any help on the king 10 four two spade board no hearts out there backdoor straight draw and if we were just heads up versus an opponent we could consider putting out a c bet but versus three opponents we just decided to check it back and it turns out to be a good decision because there is a bottom set lurking in this hand that bottom set is going to put out a bet and take it down on to the next one sitting on a stack of forty five thousand dollars casual right feels good 18 offsuit feels good too gonna raise this one up to six hundred dollars we're playing the knit game in this hand and that makes it a little bit tougher to get through all the players because everybody is much more incentivized to win a hand as fast as possible so i add an extra hundred dollars to my preflop raise size nothing super drastic boots makes the call on the button dq what do you know he's in a hand he makes the call out of the big blind he has looked this time which i'm not sure is the best advice dq absolutely crushed when you don't look this time he does and mike x calls out of the straddle so four of us off to see a flop ace right in the window you love to see that two checks from dq and mike x i will not be checking i'm gonna wager about half pot i set twelve hundred dollars out into the middle boots gets out of the way dq is going nowhere mike x he's got nothing so the two of us myself and dq off to a turn card pretty good turn card here king of hearts top two pair we beat all two pairs lose to queen 10 but that's not going to be enough of a worry to slow us down after dq checks time to fire a second shell two thousand four hundred dollars maybe could have gone a little bit bigger doesn't seem unreasonable though dq starts talking out loud and announces his hand for unknown reasons maybe he's just that friendly of a guy announces that he has a flush draw and then tosses in the two thousand four hundred dollars and then he checks dark DQ, I'm not too sure about this play. What happens if you make a flush and you've already checked dark? You don't get to value bet it. That is what happens though. He's honest as we can see. He's got the seven five diamonds, checks dark. There's not gonna be any more value to get out of the seven five diamonds. I'm still gonna try, I don't know what's going on here, honestly. DQ, he's a tough one to figure out. Never too sure exactly, but I do know that he's an honest man. He snap folds the seven high. I take it down with my top two pair. No value to be found on the river, but that's okay. $5,000 profit here, who can complain? Drag that one in and it feels good to find some run good in the late stages of this poker game. Mariano comes in for the $500 raise in this hand in early position. DQ defends the button, not sure if he's looked at this point. We find the King Jack off suit in the straddle spot. We're gonna go ahead and defend with two paint cards. Pop ourselves top pair, King 7-5. Check over to the initial raiser who is Mariano. Puts out a bet of $1,100. DQ gets out of the way. We've got ourselves top pair, decent kicker. Of course, we are calling. Turns to Queen of Spades, second spade. Not really too worried about that card. If we were up against King Queen, we were losing anyway. And the only other holding that that would really improve the most frequently would be pocket queens. I check it, and after Mariano thinks about it for a little while, he decides to check it back. Rivers the Ace of Clubs, not super in love with that card, of course. The one over card to our pair of kings. Don't see too much point in doing anything other than checking to Mariano once again. This is a good player. He's going to know that the ace should be a very good card for him, of course. Mariano assembles a wager of $1,800. We're not super thrilled about it. We've got a jack in our hand, so we block some straights. Got ourselves second pair on the board. Do we want to just give Mariano all the credit? Top pair, just like that. Does he ever have any bluffs on this board? Of course he does. He is the best poker player that makes blogs. He's going to be very balanced. He's going to be doing GTO things, and then he's going to make blogs about it. He's going to make us look stupid one way or the other. So here you go, Mariano. Here is the $1,800 you have requested. I hope you put it to good use. May your channel continue to be on the rise. May your poker career be on the rise forever. May you achieve all of your hopes and dreams that include hitting aces of clubs on the river versus your good friend, Andrew, who had the best hand on the flop and on the turn. Enjoy the $1,800, my friend. You deserve it. Another swingy one, another stressful and swingy one to say the least. Once again, very much starting in this direction, down 
$23,000 at the low points. We get into this game for tens of thousands of dollars and we cash out for slightly more than that. We book a profit of $1,700, which of course in a game of this size is uh, really not that big at all of a result. Pretty close to break even, but again, considering we're down $23,000 and to book a small profit in this game, definitely a relief and something that I am happy about. So uh, right now I am filming this outro, talking into this camera uh, in Las Vegas, but the trip and the streams and the massive games from these streams, they're not done. There's gonna be one more. There's gonna be one more session of 5100 featuring Jungle Man on my direct left and two seats to my right is Robbie, Jade Lou. We also had Ebony Kenny in the mix. It's a fun one for sure. Lots of big hands and a much bigger result than this one. Trust me, I think you're gonna to wanna to check it out. I think you guys are gonna love it. Would love for you guys to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss it, as well as any of the other videos. There's gonna be a bunch of other things on the channel, some live streams, as well as a return to Cambodia. That is going to be the next trip for me. WPT Cambodia is a go. We're going to be doing a meetup game. My good buddy Brad Owen will be there. We'll be there in full force this time in Cambodia. Full slate of tournaments, meetup game, and uh, all the scenery and stuff as well. That's gonna be the next trip for me, but as mentioned, once again, there will be one more huge session from the lodge, from that beautiful new studio. All right, guys, wrapping up the video here. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you guys again very soon with another one of these massive, massive high stakes games. Cheers, guys. Yeah.